Hello, in this problem we're going to evaluate this surface integral. Let's go ahead and jump into its solution. We'll start by writing down the formula that we're going to use in this problem. So the surface integral of f of x y z ds over the surface s is equal to the double integral over the region R, where R is the projection of S onto the XY plane. This is F of XY. And then for the Z coordinate, you replace it uh, with G, okay, with G of XY. And I haven't told you what G is. Basically, the equation that describes your surface is Z equals G of XY. Okay, that's the equation for your surface. So in this case, it's going to be 2. Uh, G is the same thing as Z. And then here we have a square root. And it's 1 plus the partial derivative of G with respect to X squared plus and then the partial derivative of G with respect to Y squared. And then we have DA. All right, so uh, now we just have to uh, work it out using this formula. So note that we need these partials, and oh wow, this is cool. Um, the partial derivative of z with respect to x, that's just going to be 0, right? That's the partial of g, same thing. Same thing with this one, it's going to be 0, and that's because this is a constant. So all of this stuff is going to be zero, which makes it really nice. All right, I'm going to go ahead and write down our original problem. So we have the surface uh, integral over s of x minus 2y plus z ds. That's equal to, all right, and then we have this one here. So we have this double integral over the region r. So this here is your f of x, y, z. So basically, this is just saying plug in g for your z, but that's 2. So we're basically just going to put a 2 here where the z is. OK, that's all we're doing. It'll be x minus 2y plus 2. And then all of this is 0. This is 0. This is 0. So we just get the square root of 1 um, dA. Okay, so now we have to find the limits of integration. So we're told something. We're told that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. That was given to us um, at the beginning here. So that's the unit disk. That's what it's called. It's just a, a disk of radius 1 in the xy plane. It looks like this. Okay, And the radius here is 1. So this is 1, this is 1, etc and it's this entire disk. So to describe this disk using x and y coordinates, um, what we can do is we can think about the unit circle, and we can solve for y. So if we subtract x squared, we get y squared equals 1 minus x squared. And then when you take the square root of this and the square root of this, because you're taking the square root of a variable squared, you get a plus or minus. So this is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so we can describe this circle. Um, so y is the top half of the circle, the unit circle. And here, y equals negative 1 minus x squared. Square root 1 minus x squared is the bottom half. So the top half is positive, and the bottom half is negative. So now we can rewrite this. We have x minus 2y plus 2. And let's integrate with respect to y first, and then with respect to x. So if we're doing y first, it's top minus bottom. So it'll be this here like this. And then this one will be on the bottom like this, the bottom half of the circle. And then this is negative 1, right? It's a unit disk. So we're going from x is going from negative 1 to 1. So top minus bottom, left or right, right, left or right. So pretty easy. Um, this is not super convenient. <laughs> this looks really messy. 
So I'm thinking maybe we should go to polar. Let's do a polar conversion. Recall that in polar, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So we're going to need that. Okay, that's going to be useful here uh, for this x and y. And as far as the limits of integration, it's pretty easy to do here. If we let r vary from 0 to 1, and theta go from 0 to pi, so 2 pi, we got it. We have this, this unit disk, right? Because um, remember the equation like you know, r equals 1 uh, is, is going to give us um, a circle, right? It's going to give us a circle. So this is going to give us uh, all the circles, right, between, uh, with radius between 0 and 1. And so we'll get the entire disk as long as we go from 0 to 2 pi with theta. So we're going to go from 0 to 2 pi, and we'll go from 0 to 1. And then x is r cosine theta minus 2, y is r sine theta plus 2. And remember, when we do the polar conver conversion, we have to have the r here. So it's r dr d theta. So be really careful there uh, with that. OK, so let's go ahead and distribute this r. I think that might be uh, a really good idea to do. Um, so let's do that first. So this will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and then 0 to 1. Distributing the r, it's going to be r squared cosine theta minus 2r squared sine theta plus um, 2r dr d theta. OK, so just took the r and distributed here, here, and here. OK. Now we're going to integrate with respect to r. I'm going to switch colors here. The yellow is getting kind of boring. This is 0 to 2 pi. Just the limits are nice, right? 0 and 1. So this one, um, the thetas are going to be constants. We treat them as constants when we integrate with respect to r. So it'll be r cubed over 3 cosine theta minus 2r cubed over 3, right? Because you add 1 and divide sine theta plus 2r squared over 2. But that's going to cancel the 2, so r squared. And we're going from 0 to 1 d theta. So again, we just use the power rule here. And uh, we're treating cosine theta and sine theta as constants. All right, plug in the 1. So this will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Plug in the 1 here, we're going to get uh, 1 third cosine theta uh, minus 2 thirds sine theta plus 1. And then minus, and then you plug in 0, but um, you're, you have r's everywhere here, so it's all going to be 0. And then we have d theta. Let's keep going. This is equal to. Um, so here we have to integrate cosine. So what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Sine. This will be 1 third sine theta. And then what's a function whose derivative uh, is negative sine? Well, cosine. So plus 2 thirds cosine theta. Plus integrate 1, you get theta. Going from 0 to 2 pi. Do that pretty quickly. So again, what's a function whose derivative is cosine sine, right? So the integral of cosine is sine. What's a function whose derivative is negative sine? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the integral of negative sine is cosine. And then integrating 1, we get theta. Plugging in the 2 pi first, we get 1 third sine 2 pi plus 2 thirds cosine 2 pi plus 2 pi minus parentheses, uh, 1 third sine 0 plus 2 thirds cosine 0 plus 0. Did that really quick. Let me just check. Plug in the 2 pi, check, 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 subtract, plug in the 0, check, check, check. OK. Um, on the unit circle, sine is the y coordinate. So sine of 2 pi will be 0. So this is 0. Uh, this will be 1. So plus 2 thirds times 1 is 2 thirds plus 2 pi. And then this is 0 here. And then cosine of 0 is 1. It'll be minus 2 thirds, right? Because this gets distributed here. 
And oh yeah, so we just get two pi as the final answer. Really nice, uh, nice pretty answer, right? Really nice answer. So hopefully this problem um, has been helpful to you in some way. Um, wasn't too bad. Um, even the polar conversion was pretty obvious. I thought just, you know, it's a disk. So R from zero to one, theta zero to two pi, super easy. Wasn't really hard. Um, just a little bit messy. And just knowing how to use the formula, being really careful. So yeah, I hope it's helped. Good luck.